Welcome to another session of We Connect, where we explore the ideas, companies, and key players that continue to raise the bar in e-discovery. Hi, I'm Ian Campbell, CEO of iConnect, and today on We Connect, we are speaking to with the team from Advancing e-discovery and digital forensics. Great to have the team here. Uh, perhaps you? Can you introduce yourself. I'll start with you, Gavin. Hi, my name is Gavin Maines. I'm the CEO of Avancic, and yes, I am a computer nerd, and I love this stuff. <laughs> my name's Meredith Lee. Um, I'm a paralegal, but I work with Avancic um, as the online document review supervisor. Hi, I'm George Patterson. I'm the manager of research and development at Avancic. Basically, I don't really work. I just solve puzzles all day. Perfect, perfect. They, they, the perfect team to have uh, have with us today. Hey, um, uh, I'm not sure who wants to take this question, but tell us a little bit about what uh, what makes Advancic tick. So Advancic started as a forensics company uh, many, many years ago in 2004. And we actually have the same management. And we our goal is to help our clients collect, preserve, and analyze data. Our, our company motto really is we move collectively to help provide the client the services that they need. You know, we're available to give them customized services based on some unique problem like George was talking about, or just the everyday e-discovery. You know, each employee at Avancic um, has some kind of extra specialty. You know, we have a cell phone person who's really good at cell phone. We have Lance who's really good at geolocation. And we can bring all that together and really support all factors of litigation. You know, it's really our, our resources and our intelligence that lets us bring that data and make it, you know, high resolution to our clients so they can understand it, you know, explaining very complex problems in a very simple way, or just helping clients get through their e-discovery problem. I mean, Meredith, you know, what are our most common cases last year? You know, were they document intensive? Were they, you know, was it a plaintiff defense? You know, what kind of cases did we see? Really, it runs the gamut. I mean, we, we have a lot of forensics cases, especially right now with employee separation during pandemic. We've had our typical document intensive cases, but something that I've seen new this year is that we've also gotten a lot of the 200 to 2000 documents for review into the system now, which I'm thrilled to see that happening. I think people are realizing that, you know, no matter what size of documents you're dealing with, it's best to have it in one organized manner. Um, and, you know, and, that's, and that's a great way to introduce them to, to technology as a problem solving uh, really. legal case, right? Then the other thing I'm seeing is a lot of young attorneys who are just getting started. So they're young, they are, they're already familiar with technology, but they're fresh to review tools. So it's really easy to get them trained to start doing e-discovery the right way, right from the beginning. Right, right. And, and, and where does that work happen? I mean, is it, uh, I know you're a, a Midwest based company, but, but you've taken on clients from all over the US and maybe even further. Yes, uh, we have a national reach. Um, you know, I've been to Puerto Rico several times. George has gone to Bermuda. I mean, we, we're all over the place um, for collecting data. I mean, there's this really neat thing, Ian, called the internet. Um, you've heard of it and it lets us be anywhere. And you know, pre-pandemic, uh, if we're allowed to talk about that here, pre-pandemic, we would fly all over the country and collect data, but we're always trying to convince our clients, can we just use remote desktop or go to meeting or Zoom to do this? You know, Zoom was a new thing you know, last year about this right. time still. Right. And now uh, the clients have really embraced letting us do remote collections. And so we spend, honestly, a lot of time logging in, getting something set up, and then we watch the bitch dry, but we don't bill our customer. Instead of the old days where George would fly to Bermuda, like we talked about, click five buttons for 10 minutes and then wait 10 hours for the iPhone to finish collecting right. and then go on. And so I think the cost savings from this thing called the internet that people are embracing has changed dramatically. I mean, we even believe that a lot of our insurance customers are no longer going to let us fly around the United States because that's a waste of money. Let's just do the hearings like this. You know, right. maybe a trial needs to be in person. You know, may, obviously criminal needs to be in person, but these civil hearings, why do we need to be standing in a room in front of a judge when the judge doesn't want to put shoes on either? Right, right. And, and, and I mean, obviously, we know what you do now. Um, how, how do you get involved in a business like this? I mean, George, Meredith, Gavin, what are your backgrounds and, and how did you end up where you are today? George, go ahead. Oh, well, I basically had a bachelor's degree in computer science, a very, very vanilla uh, degree in that. And then uh, through uh, various uh, 
professors. I was able to get an internship at Avancic many years ago and just stuck with them. Um, I was a paralegal. Actually, in my other life, I was a theater um, person and I owned a performing arts studio, went a totally different direction and then went, became a paralegal. Wow. Um, I was working directly with a law firm and we had a big e-discovery case and it was kind of towards the beginning of review tools really taken off and I just I fell in love with it. I fell in love with e-discovery and then that led me eventually to Avanzic, which I love. I get to work with law firms all over the place. And, and Gavin, in, in your spare time, you've got a lot of other things to keep you busy. What are those? Well, um, I have a five and a seven year old, which is just, you know, the number one busyness. But um, I also uh, over the last pandemic, uh, my wife um, convinced us to buy a small RV and we've been traveling the country and, you know, working from everywhere. I mean, honestly, right now I'm bringing you this live from Lake Livingston, Texas, and I'm sitting in a pop up camper. You can't tell because guess what? It's called theater. I learned from Meredith. <laughs> you know, how to stage light and get everything put together right. Um, and so, yes, we uh, we have a lot of interesting hobbies, mostly surrounded around the children, but I do a lot of programming uh, kind of on the side. Uh, my wife's a fine art photographer. So, we, you know, we're well-rounded in that whole, uh, let's get out into nature and yeah. uh, throw those kids out there because they can't go to school right now. Absolutely. And now, now you've been using iConnect. Uh, we've been partners, I believe, for 11 years now, which is a significant uh, amount of time. And um, uh, you've, you're also a, an iConnect Platinum partner. I mean, uh, iConnect is a component of, of what you guys do every day. And uh, the, 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 how, how does it fit into the ecosystem within Avancic? So, uh, you know, we started with some of the large cases out there. I mean, I think we were using the uh, the tool that was called NXT back in the old days yeah. for the beef oil spill case and eventually transitioned that case into the product, which became Xera, which is now called iConnect. And so, yes, you know, we've been with you for a long time and that, yeah. that power under the hood and the flexibility to do what we need to do is really um, given us that go ahead. But what we've noticed is um, we're starting to take non e-discovery data and shove it into the tool so we can wow. review it. I'm putting millions and millions of records from disparate forensics computers and cell phones and devices into one iConnect case so I can easily search it. And you know, in the old days, we used to run search terms in other platforms where you had to open a case, run a set of terms, export the results, open a new case, whatever. And now we just literally export all that data in, load it into the iConnect tool, let it dedupe and do all of its things. And now we can look at that pile. And it's really come up with some very interesting things that we never would have seen before using the old method of spreadsheets yeah. and things like that, including allowing our clients. When our clients say, I, I don't know what you're talking about. They say, well, here, let me give you a user and yeah. let's log in, let's look at document, you know, 295, you see that. And they're like, wow, this is amazing. And the other thing that we don't understand or enjoy is we know everything about the data. We know what it is. We know the context of that data being stored, but we don't know what it means. You know, yeah. the fact that this is a contract, you know, Meredith often is having to pull out of the clients, you know, what are they, what do they need and what do they really want to do? And how, how does this tool going to help them get what they need? And a lot of the times they have no idea what they're looking for. You know, search terms aren't the way to start and they use clustering or something else like mm -hmm. that. And, and, and George, certainly with your AI background, um, you, you're the one who's uh, working with Gavin and Meredith to sort of develop some of that scripting and then some of that search technology to, to meet the needs of the project, right? which to your point is a bit of a problem solving exercise project over project. Oh, absolutely. It's fun. I mean, what we really try to do is get as much of all the parts, all the various parts that can be uh, put into uh, iConnect. Uh, Gavin mentioned like Celebrite data from uh, mobile devices. We get that into the Celebrite more lately because of, of course, everybody working from home. We're seeing a lot more use of Slack and other uh, collaborative software. Yeah. So the idea of converting that information and getting it to a common interface. And I kind of think that's what Gavin was describing there is that we can now, we don't have to train ourselves and our clients don't have to be trained on 10 different ways of interacting with the data. Sure they learn iConnect and then they can use that to review all of the information in one place. And you may see something, you may see a little bit of information in Slack, you may see some text messages that were sent five minutes later, and then you see emails that were sent an hour later and you realize those three things were actually connected. And you right. might not be able to see that otherwise. Right. And George is really hardest. humble. I'm going to tell you that I love it when yeah. I get, somebody calls me and says, can you do this? And I'll say, hold on, let me ask George. And I called George. 
oh, give me an hour to research. And then two hours later, he's got a solution to it and he yeah. can get it to the next. <laughs> and it's definitely, Perfect. it's definitely that problems come in that other people couldn't solve. Yes. And we kind of begrudgingly say, yeah, maybe we'll figure it out. And, you know, you do it once, we call it hacking, not hacking like computer hacking, but it's called you're hacking out a program or you're scripting, yeah. you know, might even do it in Excel or something like that. Sure. And then when someone asks you to do it twice, that's where we go, okay, let's do formal development. Let's yeah. develop it, let's test it, let's build a tool. And that's truly what um, George has done with some of the cell phone data is getting these tools that don't play nice with e-discovery and forcing them how to play nice with e-discovery. I mean, normalizing date and time is one of the hardest things to do across right. disparate devices because that might be in one time zone, that might be in another, and this one's in UTC. And interpreting all that so that we're not telling the wrong story is something that's very challenging. I mean, when we, we do webinars on forensics a lot and we're talking about things like MRUs and link files and putting all that together into the platform so people can see it uh, is really helpful, but it has to be right so that they don't get the wrong impression. Oh, and seven hours sometimes really matters. And you talk a little bit about stories. Um, you know, are, are there any stories, any kind of war stories as we call them, where if you hadn't had technology, be it the iConnect platform or some of your forensics uh, skill set, uh, it would have been a horrendous task or, or an insurmountable task. And, and you were able to tackle that with technology and solve what otherwise would have been a pretty, pretty challenging business problem. I think I think we're all going to fight over who gets to answer that question you just asked, because, you know, we all have memorable cases for different reasons. And, you know, everything from that, like Meredith said, that super small case where you're taking a bunch of pictures from an iPhone about a car accident and loading into iConnect and then telling the client, go look at it. And they're going, this picture is not possible because the date the picture was taken is a day after the accident. So this, you know, they're realizing things that they had no idea about. And that was only 200 documents, but right. you had to give them that tool because if you gave them the raw data or Excel, they're eventually going to do something incorrect, make a mistake, you know, modify the Excel. But when they're in the platform, they can't accidentally go and change the data right. and make a mistake on what they're looking for. But I think right. my most memorable case where the technology had to be applied was, of course, the uh, BP oil spill, the MDL 2179, where one of our databases had 75 million documents in it. I mean, wow. every time you ran a search, you got a quarter million results back. I mean, you just, mm -hmm. there was, and it, even if it was ordered nicely, you still had no idea, but that's where we really use the uh, analytic technology that more like this technology where you went and found a hot doc via manual review or searching and like, oh, this is incredible document. Wow, you know, this is gonna win us the case. But then you click the show me more like this and you're like, oh, that was garbage this document that I found, you know, just like when you're shopping for some shirt or, you know, whatever a technology and you keep clicking until you find, oh, okay, this is what I want. The difference is when you're shopping, you have everybody else who said people who looked at this ultimately bought this, but in document review, there's no training for the model. So it's all this unsupervised model. So I think iConnect really helped us get to what we needed to get to find the more like this documents, batch those out and find the hot doc. Because you go from 75 million documents bait stamped and produced to you, by the way, not yeah. just stuff you found. I mean, that means someone had to do that in some tool and give it to us to the like 2000 trial docs. I mean, yeah, that's a huge difference out there. You know, George, yeah. do you have any super big memorable? Most of mine are, uh, my life with uh, iConnect is kind of behind the scenes or under the hood. Uh, so mostly I'm writing code to get the data in there. And so a lot of times it's clients are always in a big hurry, of course. And so it's, it's writing code uh, under fire. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. And, and I mean, looking over the horizon, I mean, you, you've been with the big documents, you, you talk a little bit about mobile data, it's a bit of a trend. Um, as you look over the horizon, uh, Meredith, you talked about smaller projects kind of dipping their toe into technology. As, as the team looks over the horizon and you have your, in, your internal strategy meetings, what do you see coming down the pipe and, and, and how is, how is advanced like, sort of uh, um, uh, morphing in a way to be able to adapt for that? Well, we do a lot of work for equally for plaintiffs and defendants. And something that I'm seeing um, is that the more people use the platform, the more comfortable they're getting with it and the more they're wanting to take over more of the tasks to do on their own. So that's one of the things, hopefully very soon, it'll, we'll be able to launch that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's gonna be super important where 
um, you have that user at you know three in the morning who wants to do something. And yes, they could call us and you know wake us up because you know we're always working. Um, it seems like, and you know we have those problems where something happens in the middle of the night or on Thanksgiving, you know whatever whatever the issue is. But giving them and empowering them to get a lot of the way themselves, but also keeping some gates around so that they don't make a mistake on what they're doing. You know, I would love I would love it for someone to be able to drag and drive drop a Celebrate UDF file into iConnect. I'm just not. I haven't figured out how to program that so that they're not interpreting something wrong. It needs to be looked at by an expert or someone you know knowledgeable in the field to make sure that it, it came in right. Versus dragging, dropping a bunch of native files. Psh, that's great. That's easy. You know, you're yeah. you're not likely to you know to to go out there on that. So I think the full service aspect where they can do a lot more themselves is really important going forward. Um, and then, but also those safeguards so that they can come back to us as experts and say, you know, what does this really mean? And, and George, I mean, we see AI more and more in our everyday lives from, you know, Amazon and Shopify and iTunes. Um, obviously, we, we, we as a company, uh, as iConnect, have started to try to pull that into e-discovery. Uh, it sounds like you spend a lot of your time into sort of suggesting to clients, hey, you might want to look at this document. Um, it, I, I think you would agree that that's going to become more and more the norm. Absolutely. I mean, it's data sets are large and getting larger. I mean. Phones now are 512 gigabytes. Uh, we'll have one terabyte phones in the very near future. It seems insane, but wow. inevitably. And then the question is, that's too much for one person to look at. So we need, and, and to look at everything, even with a great review tool. So we need that AI to be able to zero in on what we really need to see. And, got it. Yeah. yeah, got it. Well, tell us a little bit about um, about where people can learn more about Advancic. We've talked about a lot of different things today, but um, where can they learn more? Uh, predominantly our website, uh, www.avansic, A-V-A-N-S-I-C.com. And there's a lot of information there on our website. It is a very traditional website. You know, we're looking to go new wave uh, very shortly. But there we have an email sign-up list where we send out um, white papers on occasion. They're one to two pages. They're an easy read. We also do regular webinars. Last year when COVID started, um, we did 15 back-to-back -back webinars um, every Wednesday uh, from starting in March. And we touched uh, uh, well over 1,000 people throughout you know, that webinar series. It was it was interesting watching that grow from 50 people to 100 people to 250 people attending those webinars. And the one we did uh, just this week actually uh, was on forensics on three topics. And we had some of the best questions I've ever had on a webinar before. And when I looked at it, we were offering free CLE for that webinar. Half of the people weren't there for CLE at all. They were just there to you know pick up that knowledge so we're going to continue that webinar series to so look at that um we are uh, we do have a, a facebook and a youtube channel just to connect with everybody out there and we're going to be posting more to that um as we kind of get through the the summer on the COVID. sounds great well thank you everybody thank you meredith thank you george thank you gavin that's ian campbell ceo of iConnect. and today on we connect we were speaking with advanced e-discovery and digital forensics thank you everybody stay safe we'll talk soon bye-bye bye. We Connect, brought to you by iConnect, making information accessible.